Today, I'm installing Casa OS on my Renegade single board computer. It is a platform built by Libre Computer based on the Rockchip RK3328. For low cost, low power consumption, and high performance as indicated on the website. It has a 4 core CPU and 2G plus 2P GPU. It has two USB 2.0 ports and one USB 3.0 port. What makes it stand out is it can accept an eMMC drive and we can configure it to boot from the eMMC, making our machine faster and perform better compared to micro SD cards. Casa OS is a community-based open source software that is focused around the Docker ecosystem. It has a user-friendly interface and has 20 plus Docker-based apps as well as 50 plus community verified self-hosted apps. Its easy to use user interface makes it easy for guys like me to set up and deploy self-hosted apps. I think it's an ideal platform for people who want to try getting into self-hosting. If you're looking for a simple and intuitive platform for media streaming, file storage, and basic home automation, Casa OS is worth considering. My goal with this project is to have an easy to set up, no fuss home lab that could be easy to move around if needed or can be mobile if I add a battery. I could have easily used a, a Raspberry Pi or an Orange Pi, but the Renegade has been lying around my office since last year, just waiting to be used. To install Casa OS, I will need the Renegade single board computer, a 1TB Samsung SSD, and a micro SD card. I'm still waiting on the eMMC drive, so I'll save installing that for the next video. Go to the Libre Computer website, then click on Downloads. Select the Renegade RK3328. I'll be using Ubuntu for this install. Click on the link to download the Ubuntu image from their servers. Select Ubuntu 22.04 server for our board. While that is downloading, I'll set up the hardware. I was going to use the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus case for the Renegade. It's not a perfect fit, but it should work somewhat. I have to push the infrared sensor a bit to make it fit, because it's sticking out. But the case I ordered finally came, so I'll be using this instead. It includes some screws, thermal pads with different thickness. I guess depending on the board you're using, since this can be used with the Lepotato, you will need different thickness thermal pads. It would be nice if it was labeled so there's no more guesswork, but that's what it is. Now that the Ubuntu image has downloaded, extract the .xz file. And then once the image has been extracted, I will use Balena Etcher to write the image to a 32 gig micro SD card. Once completed, insert the micro SD card into the Renegade and boot. It takes a while. Sometimes, if you have a monitor attached, it looks like the board is doing nothing. Don't be tempted to restart or unplug the single board computer. Just let it finish. Once completed, we can now move on to installing Casa OS. SSH into the Renegade using PuTTY or some other SSH client. Use the username Ubuntu and password Ubuntu. Make sure to change the username and password after you've logged in for safety. Go to casaos.io and copy the install script that is on the first page. Paste the script onto PuTTY, then enter. This will take a bit of time again. Depending on the micro SD card you use and the internet speed of your provider, it could take a while. Once this is done, I updated and upgraded the packages. Once the update and upgrade is done, we can now search for the Casa OS IP address using Fing or Angry IP. Grab the IP and plug it into your browser. If everything went well, 
it should greet you with the welcome page for Casa OS. Create a username and a secure password to use. On the top left, we have here access to our account where we can change our username and password. On the settings, we have the options for which search engine to use, language, wallpaper, newsfeed, and recommended apps. We also have the controls here to restart and shut down as well as update or just to check the version. The auto mount USB drive is important to me as it means I don't have to mount additional USB drives I may want to add later on. Here we have system status where we can see both CPU and RAM usage. If we click on the drop down, we can see app specific information, which I think is pretty cool. Below here we see storage information as well as storage manager where we can create a storage or merge our storage if we have multiple uh, disks. I'm not sure how this works, but it sounds interesting. So potentially, if you have a 250 gig drive and a 750 gig drive, you can merge them together to have a one terabyte drive. And I see it's still in beta. Some people don't like to use functions that are in beta. I'm okay with that. As long as we maintain a backup of our data, we should be good. Here we have the App Store where we can select from a wide list of apps that we need on our personal cloud. Or we can also do a custom install if the app we need is not one of the listed apps. More on this in a future video. But just to show how easy installing is, let's go back in time for a bit so I can show you how I got Home Assistant and PhotoPerism installed in Casa OS running on the RK3328 single board computer. I'll install Home Assistant by going to App Store, then Home Assistant, click Install. That's it. Of course, we still have to fix the settings and configure the app, but that was quite easy to install. Let me try Photo Prism. Go to App Store again, search for Photo Prism, then click Install. Nice. Another feature I like with Casa OS is this. When you click on the plus sign, you can add links to any service that you have installed on another machine. From a user perspective, it's like having all of your services in one dashboard. If you click on the link you added, it opens another tab on your browser, so you can manage the service. You can also change the icon to whatever you like. So I added the link to my existing Uptime Kuma and PicoShare. Pretty cool. That's it for now. Stay tuned for the next video. I hope you liked this video and thank you for watching.